the day after the PRI show here in Indiana. Had an awesome time, so much fun. Met a lot of cool people, saw some even cooler cars. Right now, uh, we are outside of Jake Sanders' shop here in Brownsburg. This is the spot where Blast Me was, I don't know, it's been two years now, one year, I don't know. Basically, Tony Angelo and I came here, hung out with Jake for two days, rebuilt the Hemi and blasted me. We hung out here last night. Now we're gonna hit the road for Napanee, Indiana, which is north. We're going the wrong direction. It's not the way home, but that is the headquarters of ATC Trailers, and we were going there to pick up my new trailer, which I'm fired up about. I've never had a new trailer before. So we're gonna go get that thing right now, and then we're gonna turn right back around and go to the scene of the crime. We're going back to Alabama International Dragway to see can I get this car down the racetrack? Can we run some quick times? Can we finish 2023 on a high note? I think we can. Let's go. trailer look that much better. I've never had a new trailer, but I feel like that's a rule. You can't pick up a new trailer with a filthy tow truck. I'll grab the brush and do this side real fast. All right, so we just washed the ramp truck after well, probably over 6,000 miles, a bunch of rainstorms, and all the way from Georgia to California, to Phoenix, back to Georgia, to Alabama, to North Carolina. Back to Georgia, to Indy, 
And uh, it's currently like, oh, God, I'm thinking 30 something degrees outside. And I'm sure the guy that owns this place is probably thinking, yay, I made $4 this month on this place. But look how good it looks. It's clean again, it's not black. are shiny. Look at that. Ramp truck looks good again. Blasphemy's on the back going, where's my love, people? Urban Indiana. You have to love it just because of the name. Dude, it looks like a movie here. This is awesome. I feel like the DeLorean should land on this street. <laughs> sky right now, you know? And then we'll be like, where we're going, we don't need road. So. This is awesome. Oh, it looks like downtown's coming up. Spin the ramp truck in half here for a brief minute. Balls at all, you would have sent it. <laughs> I, I like the car on the back of this. If it was your car, I would have sent it. Town of Urban. Thanks for visiting. I'm not leaving drunk. Urban. It might be a little hard to see, but it is actually snowing right now. I'm Literally six miles from where we're going. Yeah, six miles away. And there's snow. Yeah, you can't really see, but it's alright. It, it's still, you know, even with snow and wet roads, the truck still looks better than it did. <laughs> it definitely does. We made the effort to clean it to match the new trailer. That's yeah. all. The snow's white. The snow's white. The truck's white. Yeah, we're good. Don't worry about it. It won't get dirty. Oh, Newmar. Oh. Oh. Yeah, those are the best ones in the world, dude. Look at this. Super C's? They're not worried about it. Uh, let's go. Then we'll be slumming. Slumming in the Super C? Yeah. <laughs> well, we just left the PRI show. It was incredible. The response to having Blast Me in the ATC trailer booth seemed like it went pretty well. And they weren't going to just let me steal my trailer and take it home right off the showroom floor because they had to actually change some things. When it was on the show floor, it had a shortened version of my ramp. My ramp is now extended so I could put really low cars in there. So it had to come back here and get that done. I think they gave it a bath too, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And now these kind folks are gonna give us a trailer tour and show us how these are actually built. Remember, these are all aluminum trailers. So we're gonna see lots of welding and all kinds of cool stuff happening inside here. So this is the world's greatest break room. And I believe you guys deliver trailers to people in here. Like if they buy a trailer, they can come here. We do deliveries, we do videos, all kinds of fun stuff. It's a multi-use space, which is fantastic. So when it's raining outside, snowing outside, then yeah, we can, we can do displays in here, which is great. This is awesome. Yeah. Okay, so uh, where do we go? Where do we start? Well, we'll probably start at the weld shop, start okay. off there, and then we'll make our way through the production line, um, go through the roof scaffold, go to the um, different stations, and we'll finish up at the end with your, with your rig. All right. I'm a welding nerd, so I'm excited about this first part. <laughs> uh, I'll follow you. Okay, let's go. So we moved into here right around May of this year. Oh, so this is a new one. This yeah, is a brand new. Ah. We built it because we knew you were coming. Oh, well, thanks yeah. for that. Appreciate it. 
Oh, you got Miller welders everywhere. Yeah. We utilize really three different welders. Miller has been nothing but fantastic for us. For most of our frames, we use 350Ps and 350MPAs, okay. and then most of the sidewalls, and then doing everything together, that's the 252s. Okay, and that, this is all it's a production stuff, so they're not sitting here with filler rod and a TIG torch, they're using spool guns, way faster and really effective. Wow. Yes. So they use, usually they use spool guns with uh, the one or two pound spools in there. Okay. For this line right now, they have an 88 minute cap time, so they'll have 88 minutes to actually weld the frame. They'll have 88 minutes to weld the sidewalls. And then it'll come together over on the other side and they'll put it all together. Wow. So all of our lines right now have build pro tables. So they are leveled at least every six months, if not more than that. So to make sure that we are within, I believe it's a 16th of an inch when they start putting everything together. Wow. And does you have to re-level them because maybe the ground settles or like what, what, what do you think would cause you to need to do that? So, I, I mean, with as much use as you get out of them. They work? It, not that they work, but they, they, they level out. So what you can actually do with vibrations and everything, they'll resettle. So you just want to make sure that you're okay. on target. And how do you level them? Like not, I, I can see how you adjust them in the legs, but what are you using to measure level? So there's a laser. They have a big, I believe it's a six foot level. They have a process that they actually go through and it's actually done with the maintenance team and the production guys together to make sure it's done correctly. Wow, that's cool. So every 88 minutes, they're doing another section. So that would be, how many sections of the trailer are there? So the frame is done in 88 minutes. That's okay. station 10. All right. The sidewalls and the uh, the rear door that's done in station 11, mm -hmm. and that'll be 88 minutes. And then station 12 is where they put it all together, and that's another 88 minutes. Wow. So, so that basically three times 88 minutes. Yeah. And that's the whole trailer welded together. So one group could do what two or three trailers a day, so like an entire thing. We were running at one point at about 62 minutes. Wow. And we we're. We were doing a little bit less content, but we were doing a 60 minute, 62 minute tack time. Woo. That's fast. Yes. Man. If, can we get closer if I don't look at the light? Yes. Okay, cool. All right. I'll follow you. <laughs> One thing I did want to show you here too, though, is what we're using for our mains. Um, it's actually a double hollow. This is our two by five double hollow. Ooh. Depending on the frame size of the trailer and the GVWR, that can either be a two by five or a two by eight. I never knew it had a web in the middle. Yeah. Wow. When, you, when you put the web there in the center, it Way makes stronger. it just about doubles the strength of the tube and it has the web corners over there on the side. So. Yeah, this is the structural stuff yeah. with the rounded corners. Wow. That's cool. And th so this is a frame rail? Uh, yeah, this is what we we'll use this in either a two by five or a two by eight for the main. Okay. What's interesting, I'll show you on the table. We actually run our mains on the outside of the trailer, not over the axle mains uh, anyway. So it's spread further out. Yeah, just oh, it carries cool. the weight a little bit better. I'll show you that on the table. But yeah, we'd use this for our tongue members and our our mains. That's cool. Something right. we didn't talk through is we also have a, a three saw cut line right right back there. Mm -hmm. um, if they actually calibrate those correctly, they're within a 30 seconds of an inch. So to make sure that they get the right material over here. So they, they're cutting a day ahead so they can get all the material ready to go. So there's that three foot and that buffer. Oh, that's cool. Wow. So the way they have this set up, so this is station 10. Okay. So these tables are set up to run anything from a 10 foot cargo trailer mm -hmm. all the way up to a 28 foot 550. Oh, all right. And wow. that would be the car hauler. The uh, weld shop next to us can run anywhere from a 20 foot toy hauler all the way up to a 45 foot fifth field toy hauler. Whew. Wow. So what they have is they have pegs set up basically in a simple way. So depending on what they're running, they can set this up so they can tack it, tack it together and then weld it. Wow. Yeah, this, these fixture tables are cool with all the clamps and stuff. Yep. And you can really make sure everything is square and straight. Yep. And I have one at home. It's not nearly as cool as this, not nearly as big. This is awesome. So part of the project for us to move into this building, not all of our lines had build pros prior to this, but now every single one of our line has build pros in every single station, just to make sure that we're getting that proper square and the proper level to make sure we're sending out the right welded frame and the white welded uh, shell right. for any trailer that we have go out. Oh man. Yeah, this is 
I mean, that just ratchets up the precision when you have yep. something like this. Very cool. All right. So what happens actually, once the frame comes off, they'll lift it up, they'll flip it, so they can actually weld the top part of the frame. And so then, as you look down there, we can walk over here. Okay. So they have two sidewalls to complete in the rear door. What will happen is once that's done, they'll move them into these stakes, and then this will move forward and they'll all put it together. I know one of the things you mentioned is you may want to go ahead and put on um, airline track in your trailer. Yep. So as you see, this one here is a Rome 550. You can see where it's actually pre-prepped in there so that when you win and if you do want to put airline track, you've got your backers that are already in there uh, for your track. And that's part of our modular design that we offer. This is the same frame that's under my trailer then. Yeah, this actually looks like a 28 foot unit as well. Wow. And then as I mentioned too, we use a full perimeter frame, which basically means the mains on the outside of the trailer, those are the ones that are designed to carry the weight. Yeah, the walls are sitting on this. Yeah. And, and so when you think about it, when you think about the weight sitting right on the mains, it's like, you know, being able to carry a bunch of weight on your shoulders versus walking 10 miles with some buckets that are out here. You simply can't hold that weight very well. Yeah. But with our design, the weight of the wall sits right over top of the main. Oh, that's cool. And if I add the airline track in the floor, it'll be going into this then, basically, yeah, right here. Yeah, because it's critical that you have the right amount of backer. So that's one of the benefits of our platform design is that it's already preset, pre-engineered for the for the components that most folks want. Yeah, I, what he's talking about is I forgot to order. I gave them the placement of all the D-rings for my drag boat trailer, and they're in my trailer, and it's great. And I forgot to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to carry dirt bikes in this, I'd like to have the airline track also in there. But the cool part is, is the structure that I need to mount it to is already there, so all I have to do is cut the rubber coin floor and maybe route it, drop that in there, and bolt that in there, and we're good to go. I can do that at home, so yeah. perfect. I mean, we could spend all day here if you wanted to. Um, yeah, we could actually. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm totally a welding nerd and I'd love to go over settings and everything, but uh, I think the people would like to see what happens next. So one of the things before we leave the weld shop, so one of the things we did to add safety and a little bit of ease of use is we put all the welders up in the air, except for a few modular ones on the ground. Yeah. That's to allow them to be able to hit any point in the trailer without having to drag their, their oh, lead with them yeah. any way to go. That's Those cool. are on a hot track too, so they get the full power. Well, and they're wearing fresh air respirators, their yeah. helmets, and like, this is serious stuff right here. Yeah, that's just cool. So you know aluminum ozone is the biggest issue, but what, what we decided is, while they don't reach the threshold for it, we decided to give them all the papper systems or the refreshed air just to make sure that we were keeping them safe. That's awesome. Yeah, later in life, they'll appreciate that even more. Yep. Right. So as they come out of the weld shops, they actually turn the trailer sideways and then they'll move sideways down the line. This is a difference that we made uh, from what we had done in the past. And this is because we can actually fit more stations in the building so we can have higher throughput and basically less people to work in the stations so they have the ability to work more and do stuff more efficiently. Yeah, this is cool. And I read on the website, I didn't know this before, that a lot of these trailers, if you don't get the rubber coin flooring, then there's no wood in the trailer and you could pressure wash this thing out. Yep. And so I'm guessing that one's like mine, it'll get a rubber coin floor, which is why he's putting the plywood under it. Yep, yep. Okay, all right. If you, you're right, if you get the aluminum extruded floor, then there's there's no wood in there whatsoever. You get the aluminum extruded floor going directly down to your aluminum frame. Okay. I had the aluminum floor in my last trailer and it was cool, but it was always filthy. Yeah. And I thought the rubber coin, it's gonna be quieter when I sleep in there. Yeah. It's gonna look better, you know. You got some traction, Yeah. you know, yeah. so. Yeah, there's advantages and disadvantages of both. But yeah, we, we, we've seen both be very popular. This is the first station, so if you think about this, you have weld, midline, and final. So okay. weld is, of course, where you weld the frame together. Midline is where you get all the wiring, all the plumbing, everything that goes within a trailer. All right. And then finals are the finishing touches that you put on the trailers, making sure the cabinets are in, everything works, everything's caulked. So the first station you start in, once it gets out here, you're gonna do rough wire in the flooring. Okay. So that's what you're gonna see as you move down the line, and then it's gonna be the interior, then the exterior, and then it gets to the roof. Okay. So that's what you'll see as you move down the line. Cool. 
once again, one of the things that you can see is the differences between the size of trailers and the content. So what you have right here is I believe that's a 20 foot car hauler, right? Mm -hmm. it looks like it looks like a, a Rome 400. You have a, looks like a 12 foot or a 14 foot. That one's a seven and a half by 14 it looks like, because yep. you can see the fender box that we've got there. And then that's the cargo trailer, and then it's followed by, it looks like a 24 foot. Yeah, and that one's a 550. We'll want to take a look at the frame design on the 550 a little bit when yep. we get up there. Okay. Cool. So there's a lot of mix that they can run through to be able to do that in the 88 minutes. And every guy can do every different, different kind yep. of one. And that's cool. And so after it's welded, on the outside of the frame, those welds get ground down because your walls aren't screwed on. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's probably panel bond or something it's like taped that, right? With a, with a 3M tape that we use. They okay. use it in a lot of aircraft applications and so forth. We've been using it for probably 15, 18 years. I mean, it's it's a really great screwless exterior yeah. process. Mm -hmm. And if I dent it or destroy it, is it pretty easy to replace because it's not? Yeah, it's not too bad. There's an overlay process that we can do, our dealers can do. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's relatively straightforward. Cool. Yep. And then this one, Mike, is like yours where it actually does have the coin rubber floor on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then underneath the coin rubber, you can't see it from the underside, but there's a real nice underlayment that helps protect it from moisture and things like that as well. Oh, so between the coin and the wood, there's something else in between to keep the water on off the, of the Well, wood. on the bottom side of it. So as it's coming up and you're out in the elements, then it protects the wood from uh, the exterior. Okay, okay. Yep. From, the, from the bottom side, the exactly. road side. Thank okay. You. Yep. But yeah, one thing I want to show you in this one here is the frame structure. This one's our new Rome 550. Mm -hmm. And so it does have in here the backer plates so that we can go ahead and do um, the track system. And so by looking at the frame structure strength you get in the Rome 550 versus the non-track system, mm -hmm. it's 20% stronger when you do the Rome 550 design. Uh -huh. The same thing's true in the Rome 450. It's 20% stronger in the wall design than what you get in the non-track system. And that's because they have tracks that run lengthwise all the way down the trailer. And that helps carry the dynamic load. More cross members. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. This is so cool to see. And then anywhere that we uh, run wires through the frame, we've got a grommet, so you're not going to be shorting out. Um, and then we also use Wago connectors and a standardized um, wire harness that we just moved to not too terribly long ago. And they actually have drops every four feet. So if you do need to do any post production uh, wiring, you've got the, the Wago connectors that are in there for you as well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So you can add more outlets if you need them or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Ah. And then all the wires run up through the, the, what will be the cove molding at the end. So it's all up inside the cove. If you did need a wire or anything, you can drop the cove molding and you've got access to your wire. Oh, that's cool. That is some strong tape. Yeah. <laughs> well, in like a matter of minutes, they've done the whole feeling of the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. I want you to understand how strong this tape is. Not only is it holding the ceiling panel up, but he just grabbed the adhesive and pulled down on it and the panel is still sitting there. That's not your mom's scotch tape. Definitely not. This way. Oh, don't down. You can do it! Wow. One more piece and it's getting this whole trailer like uh, while we were standing here. <laughs> they did a little kicker and then they started doing these panels and they're like done in a matter of minutes. That's cool. So you okay. have the midline front end, the midline back end. So this is a team and it kind of moves over to here, but what you can see is the finishings of the trailers. It's got the flooring, the outer is coming into here, and then they're going to do all the hookups so it gets to the roof scaffold and that's where midline ends. I'm floored at how fast this is all happening. So let's say, you know, dealers already have trailers obviously, so if you want a trailer you can get one from a dealer. If you want one custom ordered, how long does it so you got to take you guys to build one start to finish frame to it getting hosed off in the wash basin? Yeah, so on this line over here, it'll take about three and a half days from start to finish. So everything coming in on the front end and going through the back end on our RVs and toy haulers, it's about two and a half to three weeks. Okay, that's not long yep. for something this extensive. Like, that's impressive. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, if you order one like at a dealer and you order through our normal ordering process of our standard product, it's like six, seven, eight weeks for a lead time is where we're at right now. 
But then if you go through the custom process, like we did with yours, where we're designing prints and, and going down that path, it'd be a little bit longer. Okay, that's not bad at all. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so uh, where do we go next? So we're gonna go down. Just in time. Yeah. So the way we do our roof up here is a one-piece aluminum roof, and we do that on all of our trailers. Okay. But what makes it especially special is that on the outside here, you can see how the uh, metal actually is wider than what the width of the trailer is. And so like over on the other side, what they're getting ready to do here is bend it down over top of the exterior metal. So that way, if there ever would be a leak, it would move to the outside of the trailer rather than going to the inside of the trailer. Right. Yeah, it's it's runoff. It's not even a leak. It's just yeah. gonna dry. It's gonna run down the side of the trailer. Exactly. Oh, that's cool. They are fast. Those are some good tin snips right there. <laughs> Have you ever thought about having it like pre-cut, like you know, lasered so, or whatever, so it would just sit on there and? The problem is, it's getting pre-cut to that length with aluminum. So it's easier to get a lot of a roll. Uh, companies do like a composite or a plastic type, okay. and it's a little bit easier and cheaper to do it that way. But when you do aluminum like this, it, it's just not as... Yeah, it comes in a roll. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. So the th same thing, they do the VHB tape up here same time too. And there's a rigorous prep process that has to be done with the VHB it's acetone tape or something, or what do you use? No. It's a, or does it go straight to the metal? So they clean it off, I believe, with the Acrosol. Yeah. Acrosol, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that they do is when they put on the rails, they also have a, a Manus type uh, uh, silicone or uh, sealant, but they also use that. So it's another way. We, we don't have too many leaks when it comes to our roof. I believe it's, it. That's why we chose aluminum. Um, because like I said, it's, it's less likely to get punctured like those plastics that they have. And while it may be an issue not getting them, like I said, pre-sized, but it, ends, it, it, is, it has saved us in warranty claims just by doing that. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking at the end of the day, man, their hands gotta be just worked from <laughs> so, tin sniffing. I mean, this guy right here, I mean, he, beast. He was, he's a beast and he, he, these two guys helped us get to the point where we were doing 60 minutes. Seriously, this is, this is probably the most time consuming. So they fold it down with their hands, but then they also use an air hammer to make sure that it's fully folded. Ah, uh, okay. Cool. Yeah, they're trucking. Even with us in their way, they're just flying through this. That is cool. underneath on the rail okay. so to make sure it's fully sealed. Okay, that's what I was wondering about. That is a great tool. It looks like something you guys made. Finishing touches on the interior, making sure the fans, if there's any air conditioners, those are hooked up right here. Okay. So those final prepping stations here. Nice. So right in here is where like cabinets are installed and then the final cleanup. And then the last station right here is that PDI where it's the pre-delivery inspection. Uh -huh. right. I was wondering how wide of a door opening can you do in a stacker? Um, the standard, it's 90 inches wide, standard. Okay. Can you make that wider? We can make it wider on our custom line. Okay. And you do 
Lifts or lift gates or both? Lifts. Or lifts so it's an okay. interior lift that we build on our stacker. It's one okay. that we actually designed in-house ah. uh, probably about eight years ago. And without a doubt, we have the best stacker lift in the market. Ah. It's a 6,000 pound rated, okay. all aluminum. It tilts. It has- Oh, uh, it tilts? Yeah, four degree oh. tilt, which makes it all the easier to get the low clearance cars on there. Um, it has removable center panels, so it's the best of a split rail lift and a full floor. So when you want to access the underside of your car, you pull out the panels. Mm -hmm. But then when you want to go to Daytona with all the bikes or whatever, you can load it up, use the panels, and you can put all the bikes over top of it. Oh, so that's cool. That'll be our next project, right? Stacker. Uh, I'm, like, I'm like, one day. One, one day. day. <laughs> yeah, new mark. <laughs> no, no, well, you buy the new Mar motorhome, I'll, I'll, I'll buy the stacker. <laughs> I feel like that's a fair that. deal, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, so we've seen how the trailers get welded together. We've seen the assembly process. We now have a rare occasion, special day here. We're gonna watch my trailer get rained on before it ever hits the road, courtesy of the CEO of ATC Trailers, Dwayne. Thank you very much. Yes. This is gonna be awesome. It is. And right behind us is our brand new rain facility, and we're gonna watch his trailer get rained on and test it before it leaves the shop. And so this is a bunch of sprinkler heads, basically, right? That's right. Okay. That's right. So it dumps about 300 gallons uh, a minute on, on the trailer. So oh. it's a lot of water. You're going to get a really good uh, It's test. a storm, basically. It's a storm, yep. Okay. A lot of, a lot of water. All right. Well, uh, are we safe right here? We, you know, yeah, we're, we're good. Here. We're going to be dry? All right. Dale. Go for it. Oh. And you're not worried at all about this because, as I understand it, the roof is one piece and it wraps over the top corners. That's correct. So That's you, correct. you don't ever have a leak, you have runoff. We have runoff and we uh, sealed it all, all around the, the outside of the trailer. We have sealed behind our extrusions. Yeah. We, we're, we're very confident. And, and if there is a leak, we're going to catch it here and we're going to build that right back into the manufacturing line, make sure we don't repeat it. Okay. And I got a free trailer wash too out of this deal, which is kind of nice. Because <laughs> yes. it did, it went to the PRI show and came all the way back here and now they just cleaned it, which is awesome. There you go. All right. Can I go in there when it's raining? Uh, you can, but you're I mean, can we turn it off first? We can turn it off, and, yes. then, and then I can go in there? Yes. I'm curious, like, because I have a feeling at some point I'm going to sleep in this. Yeah. And I just want to know, you know, what am I in for? Not that, not that it's going to leak, I, the noise. Yeah. Or anything. What's the noise like? Oh, you want me to turn it off? Yeah, if you don't oh, mind. Perfect. That'd be cool, yeah. So admittedly, I'm, I'm not looking for leaks. I trust that it's not. I'm just wondering what it's going to be like to sleep in here. Look at a nice... Uh, this isn't bad. It's like tent. people pay for this. They do. They, they do. buy electric gadgets <laughs> and plug them in the wall of their house yep. and they pay for this to put yep. them to sleep. This is nice. This should uh, definitely, definitely do that. We did get the good double insulation. So I imagine if you didn't, it might be a little louder. It definitely would be louder. Is the yeah. insulation the roof and the walls? Or yeah, it the is. Walls? So oh, if you got wow. the insulation, you got... yeah. Uh, did you get the R3 or the R, R6? Whatever the good one was. Okay, so you got R6. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. this is great. This isn't yep. bad at all. I could yep. be happy in here. I could sleep in here. Absolutely. Piss off my wife, I might. You never know. <laughs> I'll be totally comfortable, baby. Love you. Yeah, got the air conditioning and the heat. And, and so, a stereo. Yeah. And the stereo, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Maybe she wants to stay in here. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, it would be beautiful. So you're going to be out in the road? When you're out and do, doing things, you'll just be able to sleep here versus yeah. getting a hotel. Yeah, um, Jeff was saying long term, you know, they'll have more accessories, yeah. and they were talking about having a bed okay. that could go up on the, oh, yeah. on the high tracks. Happy Jack. Happy Jack. Yeah. I would love a Happy Jack because my kids and I, we love riding bird bikes. Yeah. And there's really cool, like 5,000 acre trails in Georgia that are have campgrounds. And yeah. so we could take this in here, get the car out of it, put the dirt bikes in put the beds in, reconfigure the cabinets, go camping, you know. Phenomenal. Like, you've basically made a hybrid toy hauler. Yeah, you know. You do. You know, obviously we're missing like a, a traditional sleeping area. Right. But 
for a guy like me that likes to drag race and likes yeah. to go do other things, this is better than a toy hauler. The good thing, if you ever wanted to put a window in it, it's framed in here for a window. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. in the future, if you ever wanted to do that, pop it in, Next turn it off. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's great. Man. Okay, this is the end of our tour. Taking delivery of my trailer, and uh, this is one of the things I wanted to show you. We had to move some cabinets and install some cabinets, and so Jeff's gonna teach us how easy it is to reconfigure this using this awesome system. So we need some basic tools. So what we're gonna do is we'll put the 24 by 24 cabinet up there. Okay. Um, let's see here, so we'll go up this way. If you look at the back, what's really cool about our cabinet, now this is a square cabinet, so the fact that it's directional doesn't matter as much because it's a square, okay. but even on the 24 by 12s, you can flip things vertically or horizontally to be okay. able to get a locker style cabinet or a long one. So we actually have the directional um, components in there already. Oh, this frame is cool, because when I envisioned this, I didn't actually envision this part of it. It's way stronger than I thought it was gonna mm -hmm. be. I just figured you guys put some holes in the back of the cabinets and it was just gonna oh. hang on some bolts. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah, is yeah. way better. Yeah. So the way it'll work here is what we'll do is we'll put the T-bolts up here into the track. And what's important is that when you put them in, they have to turn and you'll see the eye on the end of the bolt that needs to be going vertically. Oh, all right. And then what we want to do is figure out about where we need to go here. There's mine, right there. Mine's right there. Okay, you want to hold oh, it for a second? Nailed it. Look at that. Right. All right. It's actually pretty easy because there's a channel back there that's sitting on the rail. All the bolt's doing, it's not, the bolt's not carrying the load, the channel is, it's just gonna clamp it to the wall. That's pretty cool. And then these extra holes that are in there are for if you turned it the other direction. And that's it. And that's it, and good and sturdy. And now you have a vanity yeah. and, a, and a medicine cabinet above your sink. And, mm -hmm. and if you don't want it here next weekend, we'll just move it back there. And so, yeah, all of our cabinets, like the upper cabinets, um, they work with a, a bolt, mm -hmm. uh, the T-nut and the bolt. Okay. Um, our lighter duty uh, race modular cabinets, like what you see with like the fuel jugs, with the floor jack, mm -hmm. uh, the jack stands, those just work off an Allen wrench here, basically. Oh, cool. Which makes it even easier then. You basically just loosen these. That looks like an extension cord hanger. Uh, yeah, well, extension cord ha hanger or broom hanger. Either. Oh, yeah, broom hanger. And then what's nice is these just take on, take off this way. Okay. Where you just pop them in, pop them down, and then secure them down. Okay. So things like this, so these components here move, honestly, even easier than the bolts do. Yeah, because you could slide these a fair yeah. amount before you got you to can, the next screw head. Yeah, you can slide it as far as the next screw. Oh, that's cool. I will say it was really fun for us when we were getting your trailer ready for PRI because it was kind of that creative experiment where we're like, okay, where do we want to put it? And I mean, yeah. for the race show, we ended up having the bathroom over here, but yeah, there was a toilet in reoriented here. Reoriented here. everything, but uh, we went ahead and put the sink over here for you today, and we're making making the room in here. This is great. Yeah, when I when, when I first saw this trailer was at the PRI show. When I walked in, there was a bathroom right here, and two days later, it's gone. This is incredible, man. And I will say too, I mean, we've been working on this trailer now for probably what, eight months or yeah, so. Yeah. But uh, you were extremely helpful as well as one of our product ambassadors in helping us figure out which are the race modular features we want. Once mm. we decide which ones they are, how are they going to be designed? Um, so that was super it was valuable. It was really fun to see what you guys already had come up with. Like yeah. the, you know, we talked about having places, you know, because in my old trailer, Everything was on the floor. You know, the our easy up canopy was on the floor under the car. You know, we had jacks and jack stands, all this stuff. And you guys had already figured out that racers need a floor jack storage area. We need a place for jack stands, fuel jugs, all this stuff. This is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. But then bringing those ideas to racers like yourself, we had a whole other host of uh, product ambassadors that helped us kind of figure out, okay, so how do these things need to be designed? Where do they go? What's the final look yeah. on functionality? So that was invaluable for us. It, you have no idea how excited I am about it because we had a situation where the drag boat was in the trailer, loaded it, 
towed it by the time we got home the boat had to go to the body shop and get the gel coat repaired because something had hit it that was yeah. not secured and now we don't have to worry about that anymore yeah. we're actually saving money and that's what i'm going to tell my wife when i get home <laughs> and one of the things i'm most excited about is the fact that yes it has a winch inside we could winch the car in but it also has this giant escape door and so I can now drive my car in and get out the door without wedging myself between the wall and the car and scratching that beautiful paint job that you've seen me touch up with a black Sharpie before. <laughs> Unlock it. You do want to make there's sure- There's two the, locks. Yeah, there's two locks. You always want to make sure the deadbolts uh, engage when you're traveling. Okay. It's wind and 70 miles an hour, this crazy thing. Got it. So. Okay. Oh, that is cool. Mm -hmm. It's huge. And yeah. this comes off, right? This comes out. This is just a removal fender. Set that off to the side. Nice. And then what's great is even for the lower exotic cars and so forth, you've got a really short angle so the door will open over top of the tires. Oh, that is so cool. A nice little step to walk in, walk out, and then you also get the nice uh, canopy. For when it's raining. For when it's rainy, yeah. sunny, any of that. Oh, this is cool. Okay, uh, we're going to fire up Blast Me. Hopefully it runs. Uh, and then we're gonna we're gonna load up and get out of here. <laughs> Thanks, Joel. Yes. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Let's hope the car starts. <laughs> I got my car now. We got lights underneath. Oh, you can get out. I can get out. Look at that. I never had a trailer I could get out of. This is great. So spoiled now. And look underneath, Mike. Oh, it's going to be so easy to load with the lights. Yeah. Dude, this is awesome. I love it. Hey, yo, we can leave this undone while we tie it down. Oh, yeah, it'll be a little easier. Yeah. Not really. It's front to back, so. Front to back? All right, you want me to put it back in then? You can. Okay. I'm so spoiled by this. I've never had a trailer I could get out of my car door in. And this pops right back in. And I think you just close it. Oh, that is cool. Oh, hey, Joe, you were right. They fit. Dude, that's awesome. I am in love with this trailer. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that because we're in the warehouse or anything. Look, our fuel jugs aren't gonna slide anymore. That's where the jack goes. That's where the jack stands go. You know, we'll, when we get home, we'll load all this up because we're going to the racetrack. Like you've got a holder for a broom or extension cords. Like, just... well, we are gonna need our, some tire chocks. Okay. Tire chocks. Yes. Cause I mean the ones you left at PRI? Yeah. <laughs> the ones I had Matt, you brought it the up. ones I had Matt bring all the way from North Carolina to PRI for me that Matt took out and we left it. Matt oh, shot. I'm just gonna leave that out of the video. And then it got left at PRI, sorry. Dude, look. We don't need it today, but there's oh, our This winch. is cool, I like this too. Yeah, where the cord won't hit the floor. And look, it's a nylon rope one. Yes. Mm. yes. Oh, nice. Did we find out? Is there a remote for this? Is it wireless? Oh, yeah, we need to ask. Maybe it's oh, with yeah. all the manuals. Okay. Doing that. This could be a first spare tire, but I don't, it's already on the wall. We'll just use this for other storage. Like, you know, you could put your straps in here, but you don't need to because they've got a module in the back there where all the straps hang on the wall. So, I have a feeling this is the remote, but I can't get it off the whole thing on the side. I will right, we'll ask Jeff when he gets back. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there we go. I'll load it up. Oh, oh man. This is fantastic. Nothing's going to hit the car. Plenty of room. We can leave the parachute on. Table folds down. Couch folds up. Check 
This is amazing. And the ratchet straps go right here. Once the car's out, you just click the ratchet straps into the wall right there. Our new rig. What do you all think? We got a bed full of cabinets. The trailer has got cabinets. We can make it so many different ways. I love it. for you guys. We're about five hours into this 12 hour trip home from Northern Indiana to uh, Georgia. Everything's going good. Truck ride's killer. And we are about to find out what kind of fuel economy we're getting. Ready to do the math? I'm gonna guess we're getting eight, eight and a half. I think we've gone about 100 miles, but we need to actually check the GPS. 10.75. Now we gotta know how many miles we went. While Joe does the math, we'll check our cargo. Still connected, that's good. Dude, the truck ride's great. Here's the truck. And, whoops, oh, how are we doing here? Turn on our battery. We got lights. Looking good. Don't look like the car has moved. Nothing's touching. Straps are good. Right on. We can keep on trucking. Got about another seven hours of driving to get home. I don't know if we'll do it all tonight or not, but uh, it's gonna be a good trip. Are you ready for this? Yes, lay it on me. 10.23 miles to the gallon. What? Yeah. That's really good because we were doing, I'd say we averaged 65 miles an hour. We were going between 60 and 75 the whole way. And uh, it only took about 20 pounds of boost to do that. I didn't have it in party mode. I put it in party mode once when I climbed a hill and I was maybe at a half throttle when I did it. So, dude, this thing's happy because with the other trailer behind this, with the boat in it, which the boat, not nearly as heavy as the car, we were getting eight, eight and a half. About eight and a half, yeah. About, about eight and a half. So we're already getting better gas mileage. This is for my wife, not for you guys. Baby, I bought a trailer and now I'm saving you money. Look how hot I am right now, baby. We're getting like an extra two miles to the gallon. Yeah, like legit. Look, we're saving money. Two miles to the gallon more just by driving to Indiana and buying a new trailer. You know, if you do the math on that, 30 or 40 more years from now, that'll pay off. <laughs> uh, as long as diesel prices remain yeah i mean diesel prices are solid right now we're paying uh 392 a gallon for diesel which i can't believe i'm saying that out loud that feels like a good a good deal <laughs> because if you're in california you're probably paying seven like let's be honest like unleaded is 265 right now in indiana it's about the same in georgia but in california jesus my friends are paying over four bucks a gallon five bucks a gallon for 87 octane nice yeah, keep on trucking 
Well, that's it for this episode of Fitting His Garage. I'm happy to say the new trailer rules. Blasphemy is back together in one piece. And next time, we'll be back at Alabama Dragway to track test the car with its rebuilt transmission. As always, thanks for hanging out and thanks for the support.